Oh. Hello, welcome back to our channel. We are here with Marie Komen, all the way from uh, Eldoret, and we are really excited to talk to her. She's um, one of the owners of a very big um, value addition company. She'll tell us all about it. We met her here at Sinapis, and uh, welcome to the channel, Maggie. Thank tell you. Us, tell us about agriculture and uh, what you're doing. Oh, okay. Um, my name is Margaret, as uh, you've heard. Actually, I was not in agriculture to start off. I'm a food technologist. And I was employed in an industry like uh, everybody else who leaves campus, you go and get employed. And I didn't realize that um, at, uh, food technology as for a job is quite boring because you technically just work in a lab, do the same thing every day. And I'm not a routine person. Um, I, like, I like the innovation space. So that's when I stepped out of uh, employment and I attended a trade fair in Germany and I saw an opportunity in Chile. And I came and started and I remember when I started the business, one of the craziest things was like my, none of my family members, they thought maybe something was wrong with me. Because who goes and starts a business in selling chilies? Um, chilies has never been commercialized in Kenya. And uh, so I would be called, you know, like those uh, aunties who you're called to come and talk to you. Like you should go to mainstream, get a job. Uh, Fungua Saloon, you know, get a boutique, who opens a company for milling chili. So that's how it started. It was really difficult. I didn't know what it took to register a company. It's been 19 years of a journey. And I'm telling you, I have grown, I have nurtured my, you know, I have become such a different person than I was uh, 19 years ago. If I could turn back the clock, there are some things I would have done differently. One, probably I would have uh, invested in people more. Because as my business grew, I never invested in people. Investing in people means allowing other people to learn through you and not being scared of you losing your skill. Because you know, what you've been given to do is yours and you're the person who has it. It's not easy for another person to come and take it away from you. So that fear of you're in business and somebody's coming to steal your idea, it's not easy for somebody to steal your idea unless you're just, again, selling clothes. Anybody can sell clothes. If you're in the value addition space, it's your innovation that will make you thrive. And the constant, you know, innovation is not just developing the product. The innovation is constantly making the product better, constantly fitting your products to what is changing in the environment, constantly thinking about what are the people of tomorrow wanting, not just putting a product on the shelf and then you're saying you're done. No, innovation and value addition is an ever-changing environment. So that is the, the trick of staying in, 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 in business, in agriculture for long. Secondly, identify your value chain. Like for example, I'm in chili space. I had to go back to producing chilies because uh, nobody technically produces chili in large scale. So imagine triggering production and then processing the products. But when I started processing the products, I realized India is the biggest producer of chilies. So I wasn't in any special space. So how was I going to make myself special? I had to identify where I could fit into the, in the value chain. And so I moved into ingredients and that's where I specialize and I do a lot of bulk. And uh, to say this, the, this, the truth currently, I think I'm the largest who does chili in those volumes in the region. So there is so much opportunity. You just have to pick where you want to be and then specialize. Please don't jump around. Don't do uh, food today, tomorrow you're doing clothes, the following day you're doing hair. Stick to what you need to do. Um, what is challenging in this environment is um, uh, light is improving a lot because I think evolution from the, uh, helped to, you know, to bring opportunities down to the ground. But at that time when I started the business, it was like everything was centralized in Nairobi. So it was very difficult if you're based in, the, in, in Eldoret, for example. Um, even packaging, even, you know, getting people to design for you things, getting people to help you to formulate products. It was really, really tough. Now, anybody who starts a business right now, me, I don't think there's an excuse not to make it. Because right now everything is available. You don't even have to go to China. It's just here. It's available. It's probably the cost would be prohibitive, but it is available. That time there was nothing. Um, getting the technical skill that you need. I, I'll tell those people who are studying in college, be very deliberate about what you study. Don't just jump into a course just because that is what maybe your parents want or maybe that's the subjects that you got aligned. Go even to a technical college and do these technical colleges. We lack in manufacturing, we lack machine operators, we lack food technologists, we lack uh, guys who are specialized in, say, in, you know, experts in specific uh, processes. 
people who have specialized in fresh foods or dried foods or frozen foods, where are those people? So you end up having to spend a lot of time training people who did other things to come and be able to do what you do. And, and you know, people complain that there are no jobs. Their jobs are there, but you have to align yourself to fit into the industry. Uh, finally, everybody says finance is a challenge. Of course finance is a challenge. To get financing in agribusiness, it's, a very, it's ranked as a very risky uh, business by the financial sector. And uh, most of the time you have to have very good collateral to be able to succeed. And for a long time it was just family money and my own money. Um, and angel investors, I mean friends who would come in and put in uh, money into the business. It was only until 20, I would say 20, in fact last year is when I got an investor who put in a good amount of money in my business. And um, now we have relocated to a new facility and you know, it's like, you know, having been on a runway for 19 years and I'm feeling like the plane is just taking off right now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've said everything. I, I am so fascinated. Yeah. yeah. And tell us, um, we've just uh, gone through synapses and yeah. we've just graduated. Mm -hmm. Kindly tell us why people should have self-development and continue uh, enhancing their knowledge through trainings and all that. You're already 19 years, but we're still seeking yeah. for knowledge. Kindly tell us. There are two things that uh, I think you must always do. Num number one, networking. Networking forums. Networking forums are exhibition events, events run by the government, by organizations. Be on the lookout for them. It's not always that when you attend an event or when you showcase, you will make business. It's not only about making sales. But imagine the number of people you'll meet, the networks you'll build, the exposure you'll give yourself. So that is one thing that I, uh, really helped me along the way. The other one is that this is not the first course that I've done in Synapis, but I'm telling you by far, Synapis is the best course that I've attended. I'm an alumni of uh, Goldman Sachs in USIU. I'm an alumni of Vital Voices, which is a US program. This is the third um, uh, entrepreneurship course I'm doing. All of them give me different skills, um, but Synapis was like, you know that, put the pilot in my plane. Like when I'm telling you we're now taking off, like came and closed those gaps that were really missing in my business because I was always wondering how come it's not happening. You know, that magic moment is not, you know, that aha moment was not getting there. I was just going around in circles and never ever getting out. And what I've learned in Sinaf is because I did a 16 week course, you know, very critical things about finding the right people to work with, which we never concentrate because when we want to hire, we just go and advertise, we look at the qualification, we put somebody there. But you don't realize that this person you're putting there becomes like a, a family to you, becomes somebody that you're supposed to care for. You're supposed to uh, mentor that person, you're supposed to, you know, work with that person. So the way you handle your employees can determine the make or break. I've seen businesses closing because of people. You might, you might can have the best product, you can have the best everything, but if you have the right, the wrong people, you're done. And then uh, financials. A lot of people don't keep records. A lot of people just take their business, uh, their financials like a joke. They think that auditing and recording and all those things are for big companies. Start when you're small. Start recording every shilling. Have financial discipline to yourself and to your business. If your business needs you to eat Sukumawiki for one week, let your business do that. But don't be greedy in the business where you want you want to floss, you want to be seen. At the same time, your business is suffering or you're underpaying your people. You have to have that discipline in finance. Yeah, I think that those are the things that really stood out for me in Sinapis. And of course, uh, being now an alumni of Kingdom Business, you know, a lot of us go to church because we grew up in, in Christian homes. We grew up where our parents really made sure that we had God in our lives. As we got out, God is still there, but then when you start a business, Somehow, uh, the, the people of God are in church and they are pastors and the rest. And you yourself, you see yourself as just a follower. But then when you come to Synapis, then you realize you yourself as an entrepreneur, you can be um, a community converter. You're somebody who is supposed to take the word of God out there. And being in business does not mean that you can't have God. So the biggest thing that happened to me is I brought God into my business now. So I feel like there is this higher being who is protecting me from everything. That, wow. that is the biggest thing that came, that all the other courses didn't give me. That's why I say Synapis stood out. Yeah. So I'm a kingdom business alumni. Excellent. Yes. Happy. <laughs> now, the other thing is, let them know 
through your how many products do you, do you have? I know you have uh, chilies and then you have I have two lines. Yeah, yeah I have two process lines. I have two products. I have the chili line which is an ingredient and in the chili line we have about 12 products. Wow. And then uh, for the vegetables we do African leafy vegetables. Um, we were targeting the diaspora but now we have realized there's even a market in the big cities. So we have five products, but we are planning in the next two years to increase. You know the African indigenous vegetables, I think we have 18 varieties or 24. Yes. Yeah, so we, are, we have a, still a big space to expand within there. We'll do mixes of several vegetables, so to serve every community in East Africa. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's brilliant. Now, um, do, do, do you export your products or uh, like the chilies, do you export or you have a uh, local market? Export is 70% of our business for both vegetables and chilies, yes. Mm -hmm. So for chilies, we export to pharmaceutical industry in South Korea, uh, Spain, and then wow. to the food industries in Italy and Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, for the vegetables, we, we export to the U.S., of course, to serve the, the Kenyans in the U.S. So we work with a big distributor in the U.S. We are looking for a distributor in U.K. and Middle East currently. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's Locally here in uh, Kenya, we are in Naivas and Chandanana. Look out, look yes. out, look out, look out. Look out, out for mess foods. If you go to the healthy section, you'll see the mess foods vegetables. If you go to the spice section, you'll see the mess foods chilies. Wow, let's promote, yes. let's promote. I uh, will leave her, her contact below. I'm yeah. so happy that she had some time to talk to us. Such a busy person, but uh, thank you so much, yeah. Maggie. We appreciate yeah. all the best. Thank uh, you. Tune in to our channel, subscribe, and uh, see you next time. Looking okay. forward to the next one. All right. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> YouTube.